Good morning. I'm, I'm delighted to be here, and uh, hopefully we can get this working. Yeah. I'm uh, Chief Executive of Ralston Sales, which is a company which we was set up in uh, 2006. But I want to talk to you mainly about not just the competences that we've developed over the last uh, seven years, but more importantly, actually, the trajectory we've got going forward. We're very much at an um, inflection point uh, between the uh, competence building activity we've been doing up to now and indeed the two specific uh, self, um, uh, commercial activities which we'll be taking forward, which I'll speak about in a minute. Just to give you, um, I apologize for the quality of this slide actually, but uh, these, I'm, I'll just listen to my voice. And, uh, um, uh, it was 25, com 25 staff in, in, in the company and uh, we were spin out from Ralston Institute uh, back in 2006, building on the research that was underway there on embryonic stem cell derivation. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, fine, you haven't missed much. Um, but, uh, uh, let me, so so we, we, um, uh, we, we set up the company to focus on embryonic stem cell derivation and very much to look at taking those, uh, creating cell lines which could be um, uh, used in cell therapy. So we have focused on pluripotent stem cells and also um, GMP manufacturing. And indeed, um, these are the two things which I really want to speak about going forward and looking about where we're taking the company. First and foremost, I'm interested in uh, telling you about our cell therapy manufacturing activities in Europe, because we're based in Scotland. And then secondly, I'm going to talk to you briefly about our iPS stem cell uh, activity, which is both for um, therapeutic uh, endpoints and also research. Um, I'm conscious that in speaking here in California that there'll be people developing cell therapies who are obviously w looking in the, in the first instance to developing those therapies in the States. But at some point you will actually um, want to move over and look at uh, opportunities in Europe. And at that stage I think the, the question is why would you, um, where will you go and where do you want to start in Europe? Um, I, I strongly believe that actually the UK is the place to come. I'll speak a little bit further about, in detail about um, the support that the UK government is get providing uh, through the cell therapy catapult and beyond that Keith Thompson spoke about uh, this morning. But within the UK, uh, Scotland's the bit at the top, the north. It's devolved and operates a bit like a, a state in its own right. And uh, just to uh, give you um, some feel for the size of it, it's got 5.3 million people, and uh, all of whom use the NHS. So the National Health Service really is the main health provider. That's got a budget of about $18 billion and represents about 85% of total healthcare spend. If you're developing a cell therapy, though, the, the really interesting thing is that the uh, NHS Scotland's invested very heavily in developing a clinical um, uh, electronic health record system for, um, for people in Scotland so that you really can get down to re patient recruitment very quickly. And uh, as the um, colleagues at uh, Scottish Development International will tell you, there is a very rich um, uh, uh, infrastructure within Scotland for developing uh, clinical trials generally, which is headed by Health Sciences Scotland. And then as you drill down, you'll find CROs and contract manufacturing organizations, of which Boston Cells is the one I want you to come and speak to. But then, more generally, there are other, there's, a, there's a rich uh, ecosystem of people developing other areas, all of which is supporting the developments of cell therapy. Um, within this, if you come to Edinburgh, which is a truly wonderful city to live in, you'll find on the outskirts um, the Edinburgh BioQuarter campus, which is where we, our company is based. And uh, um, else, this is co-located with the university's medical school, its research institutes, and the Edinburgh Royal Infirmary. So it's, uh, as you will find in many places, the idea of bringing all the um, uh, clinical and academic and business uh, uh, activities into, onto one campus is very much the vision. And this is the central uh, location for cell therapy development, certainly in Scotland. Um, just to I'd highlight in particular um, that building there, the Scottish Centre of Regenerative Medicine, which up to, uh, that on the top floor has a uh, 200 uh, re academic researchers from the university's Centre for Regenerative Medicine. And downstairs on the ground floor, um, I'm going to point, oh yeah, there. In the middle, uh, where there are no windows, um, we have the cell therapy manufacturing facility, which is operated by Rosen Cells and uh, in conjunction with the, uh, the NHS, the Scottish Blood Transfusion Service. Um, and putting this facility together um, was one of the key developments of what we've been doing for the last few years. We've got uh, seven clean rooms uh, in the facility, four grade B, which is the equivalent of class 10,000 or so, uh, two grade C and uh, grade D for radioisotope labeling uh, studies as well. And I'm uh, very proud of the, the effort that's gone into getting this facility um, established. If you are in Scotland and you like looking at um, cell therapy uh, manufacturing facilities, um, 
Firstly, you, perhaps you need to get out a little more, but uh, you're very, wel very welcome to come and study. We're very happy to show you around the facility um, and talk about it in great detail. I think the most important thing um, for uh, us, though, and to say in this, in this message um, and talking about um, our facility today, is that uh, it was uh, established um, and licensed by the UK regulator, the MHRA, earlier in this year. Um, more importantly, as, from chief, as chief executive um, uh, of the facility, I'm really pleased to say that actually we secured our first um, uh, contract with Renewron um, earlier this year, and this was announced uh, a few weeks ago. Renewron is undoubtedly the leading UK cell therapy uh, company. Uh, they're developing an allogeneic cell therapy for um, stroke and also critical limb ischemia, and they're in, in phase two clinical trial. And I'm very pleased that um, in, they've, they've selected us and we've moved on to uh, manufacturing uh, their, their drug substance lots for, for the uh, phase two clinical trial. And it's a great, um, uh, it, it's a, it's a great uh, uh, testament to, to what we're doing, uh, that, we've, um, uh, that the uh, cell, uh, renewals actually moved, moved in, and it sort of validates all the effort that we've put into actually saying, yes, we, we are actually capable of, of manufacturing on a commercial level. Um, the other uh, uh, collaboration which was also announced very recently is the um, uh, co collaboration with the cell therapy uh, um, catapults. Now, Keith Thompson spoke about this briefly this morning, and I think I'll just take a pause to emphasize uh, the background to the creation of the catapults in the UK. About three years ago, um, the uh, UK government had another uh, degree of angst about why is it that the UK has got fantastic science, and yet we don't translate that into business, um, which is a periodic uh, challenge that we have in the UK. Um, the answer that came out of the analysis was, well, let's just focus on those sectors that we know we've got strength in depth, we know that will be multi-billion dollar industries, and that we know that if we create a, an institute of critical mass and focus on it, uh, we will succeed. They um, uh, announced uh, in the first wave uh, seven such centers in um, sectors as diverse as high value manufacturing, satellite applications. But most importantly for us, the, the only one within life sciences was actually in cell therapy. And I think this reinforces the commitment that the UK government has to, um, from right the way from ministerial um, levels all the way through parliament and down to uh, other institutions like the MRC uh, and the like, uh, is to actually support the in de development of cell therapies within the UK. And part of this was the, um, or, or a central part of this is the creation of the cell therapy catapult that uh, Keith, is, uh, Keith is leading. Um, and so it's, 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 I'm, delighted to, I'm delighted that it's happening in cell therapy since I'm running a cell therapy company. Um, but more importantly, I'm delighted that actually it's allowed us to um, uh, be one of the first organizations to collaborate with the, uh, with the catapult. And in our case, we're actually taking forward um, the production of clinical grade induced pluripotent stem cells, which actually marries together our two core competences. On the one hand, we've, we know about cell therapy manufacturing, and secondly, we know about pluripotent stem cells. Um, so if I just move over to the, to the latter and talk to you about uh, our iPS cell production. Um, it's interesting, we set, we set the company up in 2006, and about the same time, Shinya Yamanaka is publishing, these, uh, publishing his paper on iPS cells. So while we're developing a strategy saying embryonic stem cells are the uh, uh, other, other way forward and of uh, great promise. At the same time, there's uh, uh, fundamental science, um, which is always uh, just coming around the sides. And I think one of the things in developing any business in our space is to, is to recognize the fact that the uh, um, uh, technology will always, and the science will always be moving ahead ar around the sides. So therefore, you should never be confident that you know precisely what the, uh, the, the, the market will be in years to come. Um, for us, though, at, um, at Ross and Cells, actually, it's all worked out in extremely well. Having been the guy signing payroll month in, month out, I know precisely how much it costs to make uh, embryonic stem cell lines, and they are expensive, simply because it is so difficult to um, get the tissue and then to, and to get the lines developed. But whereas with, um, with induced pluripotent stem cells, um, we know we can take, if we take some skin or we take some blood from, from a donor, uh, we will be able to make an iPS cell line. And even if in the, in the very rare occasions where it might go wrong, we can always go back and do it again. So we may have laid down a bank of uh, fibroblasts from a skin sample, or we can always go back and, and start again. So it is just so much different to, to the, the world with, with embryonic stem cells. And, and it's a much more interesting uh, uh, opportunity for us, both in terms of the um, uh, therapeutic cell, th cell therapy applications, but particularly in the... In the uh, 
research, the drug discovery and, and disease modeling uh, arenas. And um, we've, our, our progress in this space has been uh, uh, very solid. Um, obviously, I've got a um, uh, company, uh, staff, which have got great competence in working with pluripotent stem cells, procuring tissue, creating a pluripotent stem cell, expanding it, characterizing it, and keeping it pluripotent. And so actually moving over to IPS has been um, um, something which we found n n not, not greatly challenging. Um, we've been working with both blood and, and fibroblasts. We're working with episomal and uh, um, lenti and also with, um, sorry, Sendai rather, Sendai uh, reprogramming, and also uh, messenger RNA-based reprogramming as well. And we've got a great deal of uh, uh, success so far in all of those. I think that what that means is looking forward to our IPS production in, in coming in, in, in 2014, um, I'm very keen that we move this forward, leveraging a number of uh, research programs that we've got ongoing, both in, with Scottish academics, U UK and European. I'm um, heavily involved in a pan-European project, which uh, will be announced next year, um, which is very substantial indeed. And uh, we'll, between that and also our work with the catapults, will actually sort of establish Ralston Cells as a very prominent player in the IPS space within Europe, both for clinical application and research programs. So I wanted to conclude by telling you, in telling you about our cell therapy manufacturing activity and also our IPS program. I thought I'd conclude by telling you why I came to this partnering program and who I want to speak to. If you are developing a cell therapy in the US or elsewhere outside Europe, and you're thinking, where would I, how do I take this forward in a European setting, I want to speak to you. Um, I think that uh, we've got a fantastic facility in Scotland and a fantastic infrastructure overall in the UK, and I think that I can help you develop that and take, bring that forward. Um, if you're already in, the, in, in, in cell therapy manufacturing in Europe, but you're looking for expanded facilities, then clearly, again, I'm, looking, I'm interested in, uh, in working with you as well. If you want to know what's going on in IPS stem cell research in Europe, um, I, we've got a, a very strong... Uh, network throughout the whole of Europe, not just in the UK, but throughout the whole of Europe, and we know a lot of what's going on, and obviously we're working very much on the um, uh, clinical application as well. Um, if you are in the business of developing uh, technologies for reprogramming or characterizing or expanding pluripotent stem cells, um, this is an area we recognize that we want that we will not stick with the, the state of the art. We always want to collaborate and develop and make sure that we're working with best of breed technology, both now and in the future. And so therefore, if you're in, in that space as well, I'm very keen to uh, collaborate and work, work with you as well. And finally, um, Rosen Cells, when we set it up, was very much looking at creating an infrastructure, creating competences funded by uh, governments and grant, agent, uh, uh, grant funding. Um, moving forward, we're actually very interested in, we, we see ourselves much more in a commercially focused uh, operation. And at that point, if you're looking for an IPS stem cell um, investment opportunity, I'm very keen to uh, speak now and we'll bring forward a, uh, an investment proposition in 2014. But for now, thank you very much.